Good afternoon, everyone. It's Nicola Cairncross here, and welcome back to the channel. So pleased to see you. I want to tell you today about how I nearly shot this channel in the foot. I noticed that my video views were going down dramatically, and I couldn't understand what was going on. And a few people have complained about this. So th uh, first, I thought there was some sort of new change to the algorithm, or I'd been shadow banned or something for speaking about topics that I'm not approved of. But I can't see how that's happened really because I've been very very careful. Mm. I suddenly realized what I might have done and that is that my most popular video was the one I'd done about the CBDCs in Nigeria and I realized that what I might have done is confused Google and YouTube about my audience. So I thought I'd explain for anyone who's thinking of starting a YouTube channel or has got a YouTube channel how different it is to everything else. Yes, there is a search engine element about it. Google own YouTube. So there's always going to be a search engine element to it. And you can use that to your advantage if you think about the challenges that your most ideal client faces and make videos around those challenges. That's where the search engines can really get useful for you because people will come to YouTube, they treat it like a search engine and they type in the the outcome they're looking for or the pain or the problem they're experiencing. It's exactly the same as with Google. And that's when your video can show up. And that is indeed where a lot of my traffic was coming from for about the Nigerian CBDCs. But I realized that the people who would type that into Google are not necessarily my ideal client for my business. I really had shot myself in the foot there. The other places that YouTube suggests are they show a few video, they show your new video to a few of your subscribers. And then if they if they click and if they respond, if they like, they'll show them to a few more of your subscribers. And then after that, they'll, they show your video to people who are not your subscribers, but people who are like your subscribers, who watch the same kind of videos as your subscribers, who have the same interests as your subscribers, who are the same perhaps age, demographic, location as your subscribers. So what I've done by putting a video that became incredibly popular with the search engines on that particular topic, I'd actually shot myself in the foot because it was telling YouTube that my audience was a completely different bunch of people to the kind of people that I want to attract. Now, I don't often talk about my ideal client on here because it's as soon as I describe my ideal client, somebody turns up who is not my ideal client, but who is my ideal client, if you know what I mean. So this week alone, I've had two um, client consultations, one with somebody who I would describe as my ideal client because they have been a client in the past and they were wonderful to work with. And that that generally typically is the person I actually think of when I'm writing any marketing material or I'm making a YouTube video, video for example, that literally that that person is the person. The other person who I had a call with this week was someone who I met last year when I went to a Bitcoin orientated financial investors um, conference in the in the Dominican Republic, which was being organized by Tone Vase. Now, that was a very blokey environment, although there were women there. They were typically not that many women in the room because not many people trade trade Bitcoin and crypto and who are as obsessed with macroeconomics as I am nowadays. He just popped up a year later. So while he's not my ideal client, he is because he's got a book, he's an expert, he's a speaker, he's got all the qualities of my ideal client. He's just a bit younger and a bloke. And, and that's really weird too, because a lot of my other ideal clients, apart from this one person I, um, I spoke to this week, they've been guys too. So although in my head I've got this sort of picture of an ideal client, and they've got all these qualities and characteristics of the lady I talked to this week. A lot of the times, my I think it must be my energy attracts the guys, not because I'm a girl, but because of something about my energy is quite blokey. I know that. But obviously, the things I say bring them in the first place or they wouldn't be coming to want me to want to work with me. This is starting to get a bit confusing sounding even to me. So let's bring it back. So so what we're trying to do here is we're trying to help YouTube know who my audience are and by creating a video about something that I was really interested in and I think you should be too which is CBDCs and the 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 plans that go, all the governments have got for CBDCs and it fits into the money part of my mindset marketing and money topics um, I think I went too far out on a limb with it. So by talking about what was happening in Nigeria and how the Nigerians were fighting back against their CBDC being imposed on them, I think I put myself out there in, in a sort of um, realms of, of a different audience. 
And I think that it, it, because it became so popular and the search engine was sending, sending so much traffic and uh, people were watching the video right the way through, YouTube suddenly thought, oh, hang on a minute, her audience has changed. Let's show her videos to more of those people rather than more of those people. And I think that's why my um, views have gone down so dramatically. And, and you can see, I mean, I'm not making any secret of this. If you just look at the last few videos I've produced, the views are down dramatically. They're usually up to about 40 to 70 within 28, 48 hours. And they literally are struggling to, to reach 10 or 20. But I know what's going to happen if I can reorientate my content um, I've, I've actually made that video unlisted, so it won't be being shown in any search engines now. It won't be being shown on the YouTube suggested um, sidebar. It won't be being shown at the end of anyone else's videos. So um, I've effectively cut off traffic without making it so that if anyone does click through on it, you know, they see a link somewhere and they click through, they won't just get um, a deleted video sign. So people who know it's there and who click a link, they can watch it, but it's not going to be being shown in any search engines. It's not going to get any more traffic organically. And I'm not going to send any more traffic to it. So that way I'm retraining the YouTube algorithm about who my ideal viewers, audience, customers are. And I know that when people start, when people start coming to the channel, I always binge watch someone. If I find someone I like, I'll go back and I'll binge watch all their all their videos. So I know that those videos will get views and I know that the, the audience will start to come back. YouTube will know who to show my new videos to. And then, of course, I've got um, the option to recommend oh, some of the older videos at the end of the newer videos. I do use that that system. So, you know, if you've watched this video, you might like this this playlist or you might like this specific video. And if I recommend to you that you should watch one of my previous videos, I'll always flash up the, the screenshot on the screen. So it's easy to find. So if you're trying to create an audience on YouTube, you've got to be aware it's very different to how a search engine works. Yes, Search engines do work for YouTube videos, and that's a very good source of traffic. Be very, very careful when you're using those. Don't chase the big headlines. That's what I think that's what I'm trying to say as well. Don't chase the big headlines in the topics you cover. Make very sure to stick to um, the topics, not necessarily even that you're interested in, but that your ideal client or your audience on YouTube is interested in. I'll report back and tell you what happens, but I'm very I'm very confident now that I've put my finger on it and that my YouTube channel should be um, gaining in, in momentum again, which would be really nice because I'm nearly at 1,000 subscribers, which is exciting, and I've just got to shoot for those 4,000 watch hours within the year now. Yeah, yeah, right. a little setback, but I've learned something, so I think that's a good way to to look at it. Every, every day's a school day, as my Steve used to say. I hope you found this interesting. If you've got any questions at all about how to work out who your ideal customer is um, or how to find them online in, in and what, what platform might be best for you, then I'm only too happy to talk about it. So do come and look in my the description below and you'll see all the links to how you can get to talk to me online. But the comments box is a good, good a place to start as any. Oh, and by the way, you guys liking my videos, subscribing to the channel and sharing this, uh, my videos is a great way to help the channel grow. So thank you in advance for that. And I'll see you very soon.